In this lesson, our goal is to use inductive reasoning to identify patterns and make conjectures, so you'll need to know what those words mean, and also to find counterexamples to prove our conjectures false. So the words you're going to want to fill in on your vocab sheet are inductive reasoning, conjecture, and counterexample. So if we want to start easy, um, just by looking at patterns, you guys know how to do patterns, um, if I give you this and I say find the next item in the pattern, so when I say January, March, May, we're trying to think about, okay, what are they talking about? We know we're talking about months, but I see that they're skipping February, and they skipped April. So we're talking about alternating months of the year to make this pattern. So if I continued this pattern, what would come next? Well, if I said May, June, we'll skip June, the next month from alternating would be July. Okay, let's try another pattern. If we look at numbers, we want to first think, okay, what are happening in this pattern. If we go from 7 to 14, well there's a difference of 7 there, so it might have something to do with 7s, and then to 21, there's a difference of 7 again, so I'm going up by 7 each time. So the multiples of 7 are making this pattern, or I'm adding 7 to get there. So if I add 7 to 28, my next multiple would be 35. Okay, sometimes we have patterns that look like pictures. So I have triangles here, and I see that they're changing. So if I look at um, a certain part of the triangle, if I see this point, I see that it's pointing upward. The next picture, it's pointing to the left. Then it's pointing down. So maybe I'm thinking, how much is this triangle rotating? Well, I rotated it so that the point was here. So I went from here to here. I rotated 90 degrees. And then I rotated 90 degrees again. And then I'm going to rotate 90 degrees. So my guess is that the next picture is going to be pointing to the right. So I'm moving 90 degrees opposite of the clock, which I call counterclockwise. So the next figure we want is the triangle pointing to the right. So in each of these problems, we have looked at a pattern. We used our own intuition to figure out what would happen next. So nobody told us the pattern. We had to come up with it ourselves. We are using what we call inductive reasoning to do that. So when we look at a set of um, examples that form a pattern, we are assuming that that pattern will continue, so we're using inductive reasoning to decide what do we think is going to come next. So we are guessing, or we're creating a conjecture, so a conjecture is a statement we believe to be true based on our own intuition or our inductive reasoning. Um, so let's try a couple more. To complete a conjecture, we're trying to guess um, what I'm completing a statement that I believe to be true. So if we wanted to say the sum of two positive numbers is, okay, so let's look at a couple examples. Let's look for a pattern. So if we want to come up with a couple examples of two positive numbers that we add together, okay, well, if I just picked one and one, those are two positive numbers, I come up with two. Okay, let's look for two. That's So we use two easy whole numbers. Okay, what if we added decimals? 3.14 is a positive number and so is 0 .01, and I get 3.15. What if I add really big positive numbers? Now we're trying to think, okay, what do these three things have in common? Um, well, some of them are decimals, some have a lot of numbers, but I do see that they're all positive. So to complete my conjecture, I'm going to come up with a pattern. What do these three things have in common? They're all positive. So I can say that the sum of two positive numbers is positive. So let's try another one. The product of two odd numbers is, so we want to look at a couple of sets of odd numbers, see if we can come up with a pattern. So two odd numbers, well, what if we just pick two easy ones, one times one, we get one. We get three times three, we get nine. Pick two other numbers, five times seven is thirty-five. Now let's look for a pattern, what kind of numbers are they creating? Well, they're all positive, but maybe we can be more specific this time. I see that all of these positives are not even. So, my conjecture is that the product of two odd numbers is odd. Here's a little bit more of a difficult situation. Um, we're going to use a graph. It says, the cloud of water leaving a whale's blowhole when it exhales is called its blow. A biologist observed blue whale blows of 25 feet, 29 feet, and 27 feet, and 24 feet. Another biologist recorded humpback whale blows of 8 feet, 7 feet, 8 feet, and 9 feet. So we're going to say, if I put this um, data together, 
what do I notice about that data? Well, I do see that blue whales have bigger blows than humpback whales, but can I be more specific than that? As this increases, uh, we see that humpback whales don't necessarily increase, but let's see if we can find a similarity about the differences between a blue whale and a humpback whale's um, blow size. Um, well, the smallest blue whale blew 24 feet, and I see that, well, 24 is almost three times higher than the, the greatest humpback whale of 9 feet. So a possible conjecture from that is that the height of a blue whale's blow is about three times greater than the humpback whale. An easier conjecture, conjecture like we said before, I could at least say that I see blue whale blows are greater than humpback whales. Okay, let's look at the size of whales. Um, if we look at the length of female whales and the length of male whales and their averages, um, what kind of conjecture can we make about these? Um, well, in this set, I see that the female is bigger. Not by a lot, but a little. In this set, the female is also bigger. Okay, also bigger. This one's bigger. This one's bigger. I have one that's not. But, in the majority of them, a female is bigger. Sometimes there's a, a an outcast, but majority-wise, female whales I see are longer than male whales. No one told me this, but by looking for a pattern, I used inductive reasoning to say that female whales are longer than male whales. That's my conjecture. That's what I think. That's what I guess. Okay? Sometimes we take a statement and I want to show someone that it's true. So I must prove that it's true. So I can give examples. See, it's working. See, it's working. But what if I want to show you that a conjecture, what someone thought, was false? To show that a conjecture is false, we create what's called a counterexample. A, a case where that is not true. Um, it can be anything. Uh, it can be a drawing. Here's a picture that shows that that statement's not true. Here's a statement negating it, or even just a number that fits. So we only need one time that the statement is not true to create a counterexample. So we're going to use inductive reasoning for that. We're going to say, I'm looking for a pattern. What do I see with my data or for my information? I'm going to make a conjecture about what I see, and then I'm either going to prove it true, or I'm going to prove it, prove it false by finding a counterexample. So here's one that's a little more difficult. Show that the conjecture is false by finding a counterexample. So if I were given this statement, for every integer, we just call it in, for any number, an integer is a whole number that is um, positive or negative. So any whole number, if I cube it, it's positive. So we could just choose some integers and plug them in and see if it works. I tried to choose different types. So maybe we start with a positive number. Pick an easy one. Let's say n is 1. Since n cubed, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, 1 is greater than 0, so I see that the conjecture is true. So if I plug in a positive number, n cubed is positive. Okay, let's try a different type of number. Maybe I try a negative number. Well, if I say negative 3 cubed, that would mean negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Well, negative times a negative is a positive. That positive times our third negative makes our answer a negative 27. And negative 27 is not positive. It's less than or equal to zero. So that is a counterexample to say that um, if I have an integer, n cubed is not always positive. So n as negative 3 makes this conjecture false because I came up with the counterexample. So let's try another one. Here's another conjecture. Let's prove it false by finding a counterexample. Two complementary angles are not congruent. Okay, two complementary angles don't have to be congruent. I could choose 50 degrees and 40 degrees. Those are complementary and they're not the same. But can I find a counterexample? Are there complementary angles that are congruent? Well, if I split 90 degrees in two, 45 and 45, those are two angles that are complementary and they are congruent. So, if two angle, if the two congruent angles both measure 45, then that conjecture would be false. Now let's do another example involving numbers. I think these are the most difficult. Um, come up with a conjecture 
or take this conjecture and show that it's false by finding a counterexample. So for any real number x, so any number that we know of, x squared is greater than or equal to x. So we want to see, are there any numbers that if I square them are not greater than x, than the number itself? So are there any time that I can square a number and that number gets smaller? That would be our counterexample. So if I chose like a whole number, if I chose 5, well, 5 squared is 25, and that is greater than 5. So a whole um, positive number um, isn't going to work. Well, if I choose a negative number, uh, let's say negative 3, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Well, 9 is greater than or equal to x. So I need to find some different types of numbers. Um, so in this one, notice I could use a fraction. What if x was a half? Would that statement be true? Well, we need to know what is 1 half squared. Well, if I do 1 half times 1 half, I get 1 fourth. Is 1 fourth greater than or equal to negative or 1 half? No, 1 fourth is smaller. So my conjecture is false because I was able to find a counterexample. If I use a fraction, x squared is not greater or equal to x. So the conjecture is false. Okay, so let's do one where we might use a picture. Supplementary angles are adjacent. So supplementary, we need to know that that means they add up to 180 degrees. And what does it mean to be adjacent? That means they're next to each other. So to be supplementary, does that mean they have to be next to each other? Not necessarily. I can have two angles that add up together, but don't share a side. So they are not next to each other. They're not sharing a side, and they're not sharing a vertex. Not adjacent. In this picture, those are not sub they're supplementary, but they're not adjacent. So our conjecture is false. Here's one more using data. The radius of every planet in the solar system is less than 50,000 kilometers. So this um, set of data is giving us diameter. So first thing we need to know, what is the relationship between radius and diameter? Well, radius is half the diameter. So I want to find ones with diameter that is bigger than whatever twice my radius is. So I'm looking for, radi for diameter bigger than 100,000 kilometers. Well, um, I see that there are two here that are bigger than 100,000. Since the radius is half the diameter, the radius of Jupiter would be half of this, which is 71,500, and the radius of Saturn would be half of what's listed here for diameter, which is 60,500. So our conjecture is false. Because we found some planets who have a radius that is greater than 50,000. So this one, um, a lot of people see inductive reason as being difficult uh, because someone's not giving us the answer. So we're going to have to brainstorm and come up with some different ways to look at our problems to try and come up with a counterexample or what might come next in a, pro in a, a pattern. Thank you. Have a good day.